All right, guys, welcome back. Um, you, you have any friends that always say, like, the, the sequel is never as good as the original? Yeah, I don't agree with that. Uh, this one's going to be way better than the first. Okay, so um, the the second to last type of factoring we're going to do, and, and we're going to allow you to use these formulas on assessments, um, it's the sum and difference of cubes. So we've done difference of squares. We have not done sum of squares. Uh, but we are going to do sum and difference of cubes. So this is a little tricky. Why don't you go ahead and pause and make sure you get these two formulas for sum of cubes and difference of cubes written down. All right, so the, the, best, the best way to, to learn your perfect cubes is just to list them out and practice those. Okay, so um, perfect cubes. One cubed is one. 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed 27, 4 cubed is 64, 5 cubed is 125, 6 cubed 216. So I don't know that we'll go beyond that. We might not go beyond 5, but you should know those. So if, you, if you're factoring or solving an equation that involves factoring, um, if you see one of those numbers, you should immediately think, okay, that's a perfect cube. I need to see if the sum or difference of cubes is at play here, okay? So if you have two terms and they're both perfect cubes and there's either an addition or a subtraction sign, this is the method that you're going to use, okay? So here's how this works. Um, for this first one, I have two perfect cubes, right? X to the third is a perfect cube and 8 is a perfect cube. By the way, if you have a variable with an exponent that's a factor of 3, so like 3, 6, 9, 12, those are all perfect cubes, okay? So the first thing I want to do, we'll notice this is a plus sign, so this is a sum of cubes, so I'm going to use my, my first formula up here. This is what I have. I have a cubed plus b cubed. In this instance, a cubed is x cubed, b cubed is 8, okay? And we can see on the right side of this formula, I have um, a, b, I have a squared, b squared. So in order to figure all that stuff out, I need to know what a and b are. Okay, so I have a cubed plus b cubed. Let's find what a and b are. So if a cubed is x cubed, well, that should be pretty easy. That means my a value is just going to be x. And if b cubed is 8, we'll try to think what I have to cube to get to 8. Or in other words, the cubed root of 8, and that's going to give me 2. Okay, because 2 cubed gets me to 8. So once you know your a and b values, then it's really just plugging them in and being careful with your math. So um, this is going to be factored like this. First I have uh, a plus b, which would be x plus 2. And then after that, I have a squared, so that'll be x squared, minus a times b, so minus 2x plus b squared, so plus 4. That's it. Um, you can distribute that out and figure out uh, if you're accurate, but that should come out to x cubed plus 8. Okay, um, I think I'll let you try 2 and 3 on that one. All right, so it's really just a matter of being comfortable using um, those formulas. Okay, factoring by grouping. This one's pretty quick because we basically did this um, inside of, uh, of that split the middle method. We just didn't isolate it as a separate type of factoring. So factoring by grouping, um, look for this when you have four terms. And what we want to do is group the first two together, group the second two together. So uh, now I can factor out what I have in common. So 4p cubed and 5p squared. I think all I have is p squared, which leaves me with 4p plus 5. And then another key thing when you're factoring like this, this second set of parentheses, I don't have any common factors, right? 4p and 5. Um, they don't have anything in common. So if there's nothing in common, just pull out a 1, 
which doesn't really change anything, but I think you'll see in a second why that's important. So I'm left with the same thing, 4p plus 5. And just to show you that this is okay to do, if I distribute that 1, I'm still going to get back to my 4p plus 5. Okay? Um, but make sure that you factor out at least a 1. Okay. So from this point, um, I have two terms. My first one is p squared times 4p plus 5. My second one is 1 times 4p plus 5. And I have a common factor there, right? This 4p plus 5, uh, while it's a little bit lengthy, it is a common factor. So let's pull that out front. Um, I only pull it out one time. I don't write it squared, right? Um, they have a common factor of 4p plus 5 to the first power. So I'm only going to pull out 4p plus 5 to the first power. And then I'm left with p squared plus 1. All right. Another thing to look for doesn't apply here, but if this were like p squared minus 1, I could continue to factor that factor as p plus 1, p minus 1. Um, so just look to make sure that within each factor, if there's anything else that you can do. But that's done right there. Okay. Uh, and I'll let you guys try the rest of them. All right, guys. Hey, six and a half minutes. That's not bad. Um, best of luck and check the answer key for any of the problems that we didn't do after you try them. Thanks.